because this week's going to be another dry lab. And we're going to be talking about making these things called Lewis structures we're going to um, talk about today. Um, so speaking of Lewis structures, I thought I would start with this slide. And we did water, like H2O. We kind of, I kind of showed you how the valence electrons went together to make those covalent bonds. Electrons are being shared. So let's look at carbon dioxide now and do kind of a similar thing. This might be painful. I haven't thought through this, and it is a Monday, but I think we should be fine. Okay. Well, we have a study guide for this exam. Uh, yeah. Yep, yep. So carbon dioxide, we're going to do a similar thing as we did for water, CO2. Um, to draw it, we're going to kind of draw We are going to draw a Lewis structure right now. And so uh, carbon, we need to come up with what I call the pot of valence electrons. So valence electrons, like the total valence electrons brought by those three atoms. So there's one carbon atom, and um, carbon is a 4A, so it has to have four valence electrons. The oxygen, there are two oxygen atoms. Oxygen is a 6A, so they each bring six valence electrons there for a total of 12 electrons. Okay, so to me, it's looking like I have a total of 16 valence electrons. Now, think of these valence electrons as basically being, um, helping to keep those three atoms together in one way or the other. And we're going to be talking more about the nature of that. Okay, um, but as it turns out, let's see if I got this right. I'm just going to go straight to the final Lewis structure, and we'll talk about how this works later. But the carbons in the middle makes sense because there's only one carbon and two oxygens. Put the oxygen out here, oxygen out here. Well, let's go ahead and use X's, blue X's for carbons, four valence electrons. So I'm going to put them here, X, X, and here, X, X. And let me go ahead and make a purple, or I'll make red circles for the six valence electrons around the oxygen atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's my left one. Here's my right one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now, kind of like we did before, let's go ahead and draw circles. Let's start from left to right. You see this, this particular oxygen atom? How many electrons are there? I'm getting eight. Yep. Um, the carbon atom, I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle because it's going to share it's going to share its four electrons, valence electrons, and it's going to pick up sharing two valence electrons from the two oxygens. So I get eight there. And last but not least, this carbon atom also has eight. By the way, today we are going to be um, looking at those covalent bonds where electrons are being shared. We're going to talk about single bonds, double bonds, and triple bonds. And as it turns out, actually, you usually see this written like this. Carbon, you see two uh, sigma bonds, or excuse me, two uh, covalent bonds. Oxygen, double bond, oxygen. And then those, uh, let's see, these guys, these kind of lone guys right here, they come along for the ride. They are actually what we call they're lone electrons. We call them lone pair electrons. So I've kind of given you kind of a look into what we're going to be talking about. So each time you see a line like this, kind of get in the habit of each of those lines is two electrons being shared. So that one could be these electrons, and that one could be these electrons. Kind of think of it that way, the way I think of it. Okay. So covalent bonds. So we talked a lot about a complete set of eight. Octet, octet, eight, 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 eight. Well, boron for, I'm sure there's a good reason, but boron, when it's bonded to other things in a Lewis structure, when you go to see how many electrons it has around it by what it brought and what it's sharing, it will only have six. Um, the other one is, or another important exception, so boron is only six electrons. And hydrogen is only two electrons. But I think when we did the Lewis structure for water, we decided if hydrogen 
it picks up, it shares an electron from somebody else shares an electron. So it has one, it picks one up by sharing, it has two electrons around it in a, in a structure. It's like helium. Oh yeah, I guess I got ahead of myself. So in, um, if, you go, if you stay in chemistry and take general chemistry after introduction to general chemistry, we'll talk actually there are times when if the element is um, a metal that is beyond period three, which is a heck of a lot. Oh my gosh, period three is like with magnesium or sodium and magnesium. So potassium on down, it could actually have, um, instead of eight, it can have 10 or 12. And, but we aren't going to worry about those. It's called an expanded valence. All right. So we've been talking about atoms being bonded together with covalent bonds. Electrons are shared. Those electrons that make that bond between the two atoms actually are hanging out in what we call a bond orbital. Now, this is how I like to kind of think of it. I think of atom A. This is, make, this is atom A, and this is atom B. I'll go ahead and draw their nucleus, their nuclei, and I'll go ahead and put in their, this is supposed to be kind of the electrons, the inner electrons, okay? So what happens is that, at, and, and by the way, my circles, if those are like S-type, you know, because S-type elect electrons and S-type subshells are kind of spherical like that. Um, those are orbitals, but those are atomic orbitals. I guess that's what, these are atomic orbitals. Okay, so each atom takes um, to, to become connected together, actually um, extends um, an atomic orbital outward, and it's kind of like shaking hands. So I'll go ahead, and this kind of looks like a P-lobe. I'll take a P-lobe over here. Those are the atomic orbitals stretching out. And then, actually, if we had a, where they overlap, okay, let's see, why does I always say this? The atomic orbitals are stretch out and overlap and form a bond orbital. So this is the bond orbital. So this is how they're staying connected together. I just think that is so cool. And like the slide says, um, sometimes the overlap of atomic orbitals is more greater than others. And if it's, if it's more overlap, it's a stronger bond. These are chemical bonds. I just think that's pretty cool. So this is kind of a simplified valence bond theory model. So that kind of intersect what I showed to a bond orbital, you need to have two electrons hanging out there that's going to make your covalent bond. Bond orbital needs two electrons. And we talked um, just the other day about kind of the whole up arrow, down arrow thing. Okay, up arrow, down arrow. We said that if you have two electrons in the same orbital, they need to have opposite spins. And so two electrons in the same bond orbital also have to have opposite spins. And when you start to draw Lewis structures, start to, feel out, to figure out how atoms are bonded to other atoms in a compound or a, a polyatomic ion, they can actually, that, those two electrons, just say that those are the bonding electrons in the bonding orbital, they can come from one from each of the atoms that are being bonded together. They can, they, both electrons can come from one atom. Okay, so that's kind of neat, I think. Okay, so I brought some, I didn't know what I wanted to initially bring, but I brought some models here. Um, carbon is great. Carbon, carbon does this whole single, double, triple bond a lot. So I have like three structures up here I want to kind of show you. So the first one is um, ethane. So it's two carbons carbon, single bond carbon, and it has, each carbon has three hydrogens. So it's what, C2H6. Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. And it looks like this. So this is my C2H6. And this is kind of cool because that those gray areas, that would be your bond orbital, pair of electrons in each of those gray areas. All right, um, 
And we're sticking with hydrocarbons. We're going to take carbon, double bond carbon, and now in this case it only has, each carbon only has two hydrogens. And we'll kind of ultimately kind of talk about why that is. So that's a double bond. So do you buy this? So how many electrons are there in that double bond? There are four electrons. Yep. Because each line is two electrons. So that one looks like this. And you're like, well, what's up with the purple and the pink? Well, I'm going to talk about that momentarily. Um, but just ignore that for now. Okay. So we have the two carbons okay, uh, bonded together. And each carbon has two hydrogens. And that is my C2H4. And then last but not least, we have, I'll kind of do it up in the same line as my previous one, carbon triple bond carbon. Now one of the cool things about uh, bonds is if you keep, as you keep, as you increase what we call the bond orbiter order from one to two to three, from single to double to triple, those carbons come closer together and actually there's a whole lot of strength in that triple bond. And in this case it can only actually, it makes more like a hot dog. It can only, uh, each carbon can only reach out to one other hydrogen. Okay, so this is my C2H2. Okay, so again, this is coming, I'm going to talk about the pink and the purple here in a minute. But here's the two carbons and hydrogens. All right. So... I kind of liken it to ice cream. You can have vanilla ice cream and chocolate ice cream, kind of two flavors. But probably more importantly is it works out pretty good if you think of it a main course, a main course covalent bond, and kind of a secondary, it's called a secondary bond. So the primary bond is called a sigma bond, the Greek letter sigma. It's like a little circle with a little hat. Okay. So um, sigma bonds are covalent bonds where electrons are being shared. They are primary, so anytime, by golly, they're, I'm going to go ahead and tell you then these models we've been looking at, they are gray. Anytime you see gray, that's a sigma bond. It's the first to, the, to arrive and always, always there. Sigma bond, hardcore. Okay, you, you can't have the secondary bond I'm going to show you unless you have a sigma bond. So all single bonds are sigma bonds. And like the slide says, where are those two electrons that, is, that are in the bond orbital um, that are connecting the atoms? They actually are kind of in a line between the nuclei of the atoms that are being connected. So here, hydrogen, carbon, it's right between the nuclei. So that one you got to, got to, got to have, sigma bond, if you have two atoms that are joined together. We just passed Pi Day not too long ago, Pi Day 314, okay? So our other type of bond is a pi bond. We call it secondary. And I think it's kind of fun because, of course, pi is a type of dessert. And so once you have your sigma bond, then you can have dessert. You can have pi. So pi bonds, um, if you have a double bond, for instance, when we have the uh, carbon, double bond carbon, the first one was the sigma bond. The second bond, the second covalent bond was a pi bond. So if we go back to the C2H4, okay, we had a sigma bond that's gray. And like the slide says, though, where are the two electrons that are, are your pi um, covalent bond going to be? Actually, they are going to be, and I have some pictures coming up at some point, they're going to be in a cloud outside the sigma bond. Okay, so that actually, one pink and purple make a pi bond. So here where we have uh, carbon triple bond carbon, of course the gray is the sigma first to arrive, and we end up with two pairs of pi regions where electrons are. So this is pi, pi, or sigma. So that's kind of how that works. Another thing when you're drawing um, like a Lewis structure, um, I usually call this the valence of an atom, and it sounds like valence electrons, and they are kind of related. But I usually call this the number of times it will reach out. Valence of an atom, number of times 
an atom will reach out out I'll say with covalent bonds and remember covalent could be sigma or pi covalent bonds it's like an octopus so um, we get the valence the expected valence of an atom Oh, by the way, let me qualify this, too. This expected valence I'm going to show you only works if your molecule is neutral. So you can know what the expected valence is if you take 8 minus the group number. So, for instance, if we start from right back to left again, oh, my goodness, if we start with the rare gases, rare gases are group 8. Well, if you take 8 minus 8, you get none. So they don't reach out any, okay? So if you go over one, we call those the halogens. If you take eight minus seven, you get one. So all of those guys reach out once, okay? Beginning with oxygen, sulfur, selenium, six A, so eight minus six is two. It's gonna reach out twice. Nitrogen is uh, phosphorus, a group five A, eight minus five is gonna reach out three times. I guess I could go on to the next slide. Um, carbon is a group 4A, so 8 minus 4, its group number is 4. So if you go back a few slides where we did those um, hydrocarbons, the carbon single bond carbon, carbon double bond carbon, carbon triple bond carbon, in each one of those cases it was reaching out four times. If you pick a carbon atom, either the left one or the right one, and you count um, sigma and pi bonds, I get four. When you're drawing your Lewis structures, though, it's also very important that you are cool with this idea. How many times does hydrogen want to reach out? Just once. Sometimes we're tempted to draw um, a structure of a compound where we just overload hydrogen, you know, but it only wants to reach out once. It only wants to pick up, share an electron from something else and have two electrons. And then there's boron. We said it's happy with a set of six, not eight electrons. And because of that, then, it's going to reach out three times. Okay. So that's kind of how that goes. But these are only four neutral molecules. If you're an and, I should say, um, well, I should finish that thought. If you're, t if you're trying to draw a Lewis structure of like um, a polyatomic ion, like sulfate, nitrate, you know, um, hypochlorite, um, then it won't follow this rule. And this doesn't always work either. So one more look at this expected valence, how many times you, you expect it to reach out. These are those Lewis dot formulas where, of course, you know, you have the symbol of the element and all the non-valence electrons, and you have the dots, just like your homework that represent valence electrons. So um, it actually kind of works well if you kind of see how many times something would saddle up next to carbon, and you get four, okay? Number of vacancies for nitrogen, you get three. Vacancies for oxygen, which is 6A, 8 minus 6 is 2, you get 2. Fluorine is a 7A, 8 minus 7 is 1, you get 1. Neon, it's full. So those, it all kind of works, works together. So um, what we've done, what we did Friday with water and what we did just today. Oh, my goodness, we didn't do that today. If we go back to, let's see if I can pull it up. If we go back to our carbon dioxide, I know it looks a little bit ugly, but you see where we came up with, you guys are probably okay with the 16 electrons, that pot of electrons that came from the carbon and oxygen. What we need to do is to double check, do we have 16 electrons here? Yeah. And we do. I get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So that's kind of what I mean by that slide. So when we draw Lewis structures on Thursday's lab, one of the first things you're going to, steps I'm going to kind of pull you through is to come up with the pot of valence electrons, just like we've been, we did for water, we did for carbon dioxide today.
you need to, in order to come up with a pot of valence electrons, you need to keep in mind how do you know how many valence electrons each element has, and it's the group number if it's a, um, a, a main group element. So that pot needs to show up somewhere on your structure. So the bonding pairs, you guys are good with, um, you guys told me, for instance, a double bond has four electrons, a single bond has two electrons. How many electrons does a triple bond have? Six. Six electrons, perfect. And then the other thing I need to um, keep talking about is this idea, did you see um, the, I call them dot dots, like for our oxygen, for carbon dioxide, each oxygen had like, dot, 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 dot. Those are lone pair electrons. They help make the octet, and actually they are players in how carbon dioxide behaves. Um, so, all right. So this kind, let's see, Lewis structures. Um, Lewis structures, we did one on Friday for water. We did one today for carbon dioxide. Lewis structures, we did Lewis structures for the C2H6, C2H4, and C2H2. Those were Lewis structures. So you already kind of know what those are. Um, basically, we need to say what atoms are connected together. We use the symbol of the atom, and that represents the nucleus and the non-valence electrons. Um, every time you see a dash, that's a pair of electrons, bonding electrons, whether it's a sigma or a pi bond. Um, if you have extra electrons in your pot of valence electrons that can help make complete octets, they need to show up somewhere on your structure. And for this class anyway, they will always be in pairs. They'll be buddied up, a, a, a pair of lone pair electrons. Okay. And it's kind of cool. I'm hoping you start to kind of think about this, but they kind of, they kind of give fuzz. They, they are there. They are like regions. Okay. We'll talk about how they bring substance to the molecule. Um, and we do a lot of kind of north, south, east, west sort of thing because that kind of gives us four quadrants because each quadrant would be two electrons and four times two is eight. But it's really, really no specific way does that have to be. So when we draw Lewis structures um, today or in your lab on Thursday, they're pretty flat. They're like, you know... But in Thursday's lab, you're going to be able to have uh, models, smaller models than this. They're plastic instead of these kind of older wooden bottles. But you can actually kind of lift the flat structure off the paper, and we'll be kind of talking about that. How does, what does it look like? A lot of times in chemistry, the shape of the molecule is a player as to its functionality. All right. So let's just, I wonder how I want to do this do it this way. Okay, ammonia looks like, so that black thing is nitrogen, and we need three hydrogens, that would be the white balls, and when I do this, can you see where this actually is that lone pair electron, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's, it's, these three are kind of pulled out, and that's, that's spatially what ammonia does. Um, and because, like I said, these, these dot dots, these two electrons, lone pair electrons, actually take up space. So there's ammonia. Um, formaldehyde, I wonder, I don't think I can do that with these. I can kind of do with them. Looks like... So I'll try to kind of arrange it like this. So this that this will be my carbon atom. Okay. This actually I'm going to make now oxygen. No, because I want to go ahead and I've done this one before. We'll make black oxygen. Ah! <laughs> black oxygen. Let's go ahead and put the lone pair electrons up there. Oops, no, I'm going to run out of. Oh, 
totally glitch this one. Yeah, we need the other kits to do this. <laughs> My, I don't have the, I can't make more double bonds. Instead, for this one, let's go ahead and count electrons right quick. All right, so hydrogen. There are two hydrogen atoms, and each of them have one valence electron. Two electrons there. For carbon, there is one carbon atom. It's 4A, so it brings four valence electrons, four electrons. And for oxygen, there's one oxygen atom. It's 6A, so there it brings six elect valence electrons. So if you add 2 plus 4 plus 6, I get 12 electrons. So let's just kind of double check. Do we have 12 electrons? Hydrogen, oh, sorry. There's two electrons here, two, four, six, eight. I have eight bonding electrons, um, 10, 12. So I got 12 electrons. I'm, I'm cool with that. And then the other thing um, is if we want to go ahead and circle, like hydrogen, pick on hydrogen. Now if I circle the bond that is associated with hydrogen, I got two electrons there, so that's like helium. If we pick the, on the carbon and go ahead and draw a circle around everything that carbon has custody of, joint custody of, carbon has two, four, six, eight. Carbon has a complete octet. Draw a circle around the other hydrogen. It's got a duet, which is like helium. If we pick on the oxygen, um, oxygen, of course, looks like this. It's got four lone pair electrons and two bonding electrons, excuse me, four bonding electrons, so it's got a complete octet. So that all works. Um, hypochlorite, that's one of the ones you're supposed to memorize. That's CLO minus. Let's quickly do that one. So I got chlorine. I only have one chlorine atom, and it's 7A, so seven valence electrons. I have oxygen, one oxygen atom, again, it's 6A. Now, let's see if you guys buy this. Do you see where it is a minus one charge? So actually, that means you kick in one electron to the pot. So I'm just going to say for charge, I'm going to add one electron because it's minus one. So now, if I take 6 plus 7 plus 1, I get 14 electrons. And 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. I get 14 electrons on that final structure, which is awesome. And if I draw a circle around chlorine, I got octet. If I draw a circle around oxygen, I also got an octet. So let's look at that whole... Remember I said the expected valence of an atom is 8 minus the group number? So if we look at the expected valence of, of uh, chlorine, it's group number 7. So if you take 8 minus 7, you expect it to reach out one time. So that's cool. If we look at oxygen, if we take 8 minus its group number, its group number is 6, you expect it to reach out twice, and it's only reaching out once. But this is not a neutral molecule. So this check really is kind of a, a route you can't really use as a check. If we did the check here, right quick, so um, carbon, the expected valence of carbon is 8 minus the group number. It's group number 4. So we expect it to reach out four times. One, two, three, four. It is. Um, switching colors here. Um, expected valence of an oxygen atom would be eight minus the group number. The group number is six. So we expect it to reach out twice. And it is. So that's kind of how that goes. This is a neutral molecule. I don't know if you guys probably remember the expected valence of the hydrogen atoms is just one. So that's right. Okay. So these, it's kind of like your, um, your nomenclature lab where I, I uh, want to cover it in lab and then this assignment will be due. So actually this extends this out to next Monday.
this will be due. Okay, so I'll try to remind you and we'll take a look at them. Um, so I want to do a few slides in the next part. <coughs> so you're not going to have an assignment today, or if it's due for Wednesday. Okie dokie. So we talked about valence bond theory, basically the idea of um, a bond orbital that's formed by two atomic orbitals and two electrons hang out there and they make a covalent bond, electrons are shared, it can be a sigma or a pi bond. And um, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, um, sometimes this is called VESPER, VESPER, valence shell, valence shell electron, no, wait a minute. V-S-E-P-R, thank you. <laughs> it's like valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm sure some of those words ring bells already. We've been talking about valence shell electrons, and when we draw Lewis, drew Lewis structures, we were talking about how we use those valence shell electrons to go ahead and connect the atoms together. Now we are, and we talked about how they go in pairs. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a weird question, but um, why, why did they call it the separate theory instead of the separate, like, why did they, why did, why they, did they leave off the T? I don't, that's a good question. <laughs> I think it just doesn't ring as well with the T on there. That's a good question. Um, but this idea of repulsing, this is actually going to give us shape. The big thing that comes out of all this is it gives us shape. It gives us shape around an atom. So, um, we said that, um, well, how was it? Okay, shape around an atom. So what's going to happen around an atom is the sigma bond, forget the pi bonds for now, but the sigma bond and the dot dots, the lone pair electrons, are going to get as far apart as they can from each other. As far apart as they can from each other. That's the repulsion part in valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Um, and like we said, uh, where, is the, where are the two electrons and the sigma bond? They are lying kind of the gray, right? They're the gray. They're lying between the nuclei of atoms that they're connecting. So what about the electrons that are in pi orbitals, um, covalent orbitals? Well, it's kind of, they're the pink and the purple. They kind of take what's left over. They don't really give shape around an atom. They're just kind of along for the ride. So in order to... Um, talk about valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, we need to talk about hybridization, orbital hybridization. So remember I said that atom A and atom B take atomic orbitals and they send out atomic orbitals to overlap and basically create a bond orbital? Well, what can happen and what does happen on a routine basis is that the atom actually will take, um, take, how do I say this? It will take multiple atomic orbitals and if you're familiar with a hybrid, it basically takes kind of characteristics of the parents and spits out something different. So what an atom does is it takes some or two or more of its own atomic orbitals. It spits them out to actually then go ahead and participate in bonding. It creates hybridized orbitals. So hybridized orbitals that an atom spits out, I know this sounds kind of strange. I think it does. Those hybridized orbitals can only do one of two things. They can be, those hybridized or, uh, orbitals, atomic orbitals, can be locations for lone pair electrons, or they can go ahead and reach out and overlap and create a bond orbital only for the sigma bond. That's it. Okay, so hybridized orbitals, what they cannot do is be a location for pi electrons. That's in unhybridized orbitals. So, um, 
So when we talk about electron pair groups, it's kind of like what we've been talking about this morning, electron pair groups. Um, pairs meaning two, right? Um, they can, a single bond is one, one group, a double bond is two groups, a triple bond is three groups. Uh, one lone pair electron is one group. So I think we'll go ahead, I'm going to do this, this will be the last one. And we'll kind of reinforce this on Wednesday. So here we go. If you have something, this is a really important table, by the way. Okay. So um, the first column is the number of sigma bonds and lone pair electrons. So if you look at an atom and you look at its final Lewis structure and you have two sigma bonds, no lone pair electrons, then what that atom has undergone to get there in that molecule or uh, polyatomic ion is, is done what we call an sp orbital hybridization. That atom took one of its s orbitals, atomic orbitals, and one of its p atomic orbitals, put them together, and spit back out two equal hybridized orbitals. Um, if you have three things extending from an atom, and again, the only things can be sigma bonds and lone pair electrons, then that atom has undergone sp2 or orbital hybridization. Okay. Um, if you have four things, then it's undergone sp3 orbital hybridization. There's something called the conservation of atomic orbitals. So do you guys buy this? It's kind of handy. That if you look at sp, you know, it's s1, p1, there's only two atomic orbitals. So how many could it come spit out? Two. If you look at sp2, Okay, if you add 1 plus 2, that's 3. Okay, if you look at sp3, 1 plus 3 is 4. Conservation of orbitals. Okay, so that's not nearly as exciting as probably this. And what I said shape, remember a little bit ago I said Vesper shape? Okay, National Electron Power Repulsion Theory gives us shape. So this I think I will be, I can do with this kit. So, bottom line, and I'll go ahead and I'll just put a couple of, I don't even know what this compound is, um, but the yellow one, if we wanted to describe what was going on with the yellow one there, okay, notice I have a single bond atom, a single bond atom. The, it has two sigma bonds extending from that, okay? So, actually, we said that that yellow atom has undergone sp orbital hybridization, okay? Um, we said, though, we say that the shape around this yellow atom is linear. It looks linear. The shape around this yellow atom is linear. And the bond angle, the last column, is 180. Okay? That's that scenario. The next scenario, I think this one should work fine for that one, looks like this. So in the next scenario, on the first column, you see three, okay? So in that case, we've got three things extending from that, uh, three things extending. Now, when I say things, in the first column at the header, it says these can be sigma bonds or lone pair electrons, three, okay? So the whole idea a minute ago, we said that repulsion part is that these things are going to get as far apart as they can. So this does make something that is what we call planar. This is planar. Okay, it's called trigonal planar. Now I want you to kind of watch out for this though because it doesn't only have to be sigma bonds, it could be lone pair electrons. So, like for instance, if I just go ahead and put a little stub here, my stubs are lone pair electrons. So we could have one lone pair electrons, two sigma bonds, that's three things. That's trigonal planar. This bond angle is if you take 360 divided by 3, you get 120. And last but not least, what we're going to worry about is if you have four things. And the best something can do if it's got four things extending from it, these black ones were really pretty good, is to do this. Here's my four things. So again, we're just when we do this table, all we can do is look at an atom. 
It's called the structural geometry, electron pair geometry of a particular atom in a, a, the situation. So here we can count one, two, three, four, okay, um, sigma bonds, um, and we call this tetrahedral. This bond angle actually is 109.5. But I, I want you to be careful. Okay, I just went ahead and turned that from a bond, sigma bond, into a lone pair electron. This is ammonia. This is NH3, actually. Okay, and we said that they kind of, the hydrogens kind of lay, lie like this. Why? Because they're being repulsed by electron cloud up there. That's tetrahedral. One more step further, actually the other day on Friday, we, got, we drew the Lewis structure of water. This is water, water, H2O. So oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen. But when we drew that Lewis structure, the oxygen had two lone pair electrons. Okay, so what does it have around it? Well, it has one, two, three, four. Two of them are lone pair electrons and two of them are sigma bonds to the hydrogens. Okay, so water is, is actually the... I should say not the water molecule, but the oxygen atom in the water molecule is tetrahedral. Okay? So we'll be talking more about that, and that should do it. Okay? We'll see you on Wednesday.